de, de business arménia qui va peut-être parler de, de, de l'attraction, de la politique de stratégique, d'attraction des investisseurs. Des... Who you are as a human being. 
group you based on who you are, personality traits that consist within one human. So you, 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 everybody in this room is a dot on this map. Everybody in Armenia is a dot on this map. Everybody in Francophone countries are a dot on this map. 7.5 billion dots on this map. Every single human is somewhere on this map. So if you group it that way, what happens? What happens if we start thinking about people as just vessels of behavior, vessels of value systems? Well, something interesting happens, and I'm only going to show you the post-Soviet area, because I think it's an area that you don't know as well as the other areas, and because I have a lot of data on the post-Soviet areas, to be honest. There's about 15 or more post-Soviet countries, and, and our first data points go all the way back about 20 years or so. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of data going behind what, what I'm about to show you. So here's what actually happens, and this is very interesting. Because once you look at it from this point of view, every single post-Soviet country went through the same process. Every single post-Soviet country has gone through this process to a point where we can actually tell you what's going to happen next in every single country. So, I'm just going to give you an overview, quick cliff notes. I won't go too much into the data and the details. I'll let you later on grab me when I'm walking around or during dinner. I'll give you more information if you need it. But if you look at the map, you see we put the little post-Soviet, the, the Soviet um, flag over there. That's the bottom right corner. It's control, security, and belonging. So control, security, and belonging. Well, those are three words very associated with the Soviet Union. Controlling, very high levels of security, but also a sense of belonging, right? Communism, the comrade feeling, if you will, right? So here's what happens. When the post-Soviet Union collapsed, all of the countries ran to the left. The wolf of Wall Street. It just became me, 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 grab as much as you can, making money, privatization, corruption, and everybody, they basically jungle law. Economic jungle law. The bigger fish ate the smaller fish, and so on and so forth, until there was only four or five big fishes left in the sea. That's what happened. It happened in the Czech Republic, in Poland, in, in Russia, Armenia, Moldova, Georgia, the only countries that didn't happen is North Korea, for understandable reasons, and Cuba. But Cuba's on its way. Cuba is, is going to be hit that Wolf of Wall Street situation very, very soon, no doubt. So there's a lot of me, 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 grab what you can and all this you know, mentality going on. And I'm talking this is early 90s, right? 91, 92, 95, 98, that, that era. And then, you know, what, what happens is really interesting after that. What happens is people start saying that, well, it was better in the Soviet times. Was it? No, it definitely wasn't. There's no doubt it wasn't better in the Soviet times. But people start thinking that way. They start feeling that emotion. Now what they want is the belonging. That's what they're missing. They don't want the security, and they definitely, definitely don't want the control. But they do want the belonging. They want to feel like there's community. It's not just jungle law and everybody can do whatever the hell they want as long as there's money involved. The more you pay, the more you get. Do we pay for loyalty? You pay for contracts, you pay for status, you pay for everything. Well, what happens is people get, basically they get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And what happens is they curve up to that top right corner, which is, I think, where we put the Swiss president. I really like him. He's, he's sitting, a picture right there is him sitting on the floor in New York. Just, he just because. It's not, it's not a populist statement, it's not PR, it's just who he is. Just a normal, regular guy that's super smart. But pop right, very community, very relaxed, very comfortable with who you are. There's no me, me, there's no this power status grab, there's no the alpha male emotion. And that curve right there is what every single post-Soviet. Poland curve first. 
and they occurred during the Kwasniewski era. That's why we actually call it the Kwasniewski curve. So this Kwasniewski curve is basically like an index. Every single country is somewhere in that curve. Some countries are ahead, some countries are behind. Now here's the beauty of all of this. The beauty is because this is behavior based and it's based on the value system of the human being, you cannot stop it. You cannot stop this process. This process will continue because it's organic. You can accelerate it or decelerate it based on economic policy, based on foreign policy, and based on internal policies. But you cannot stop it. If you try to stop it, you will lose. As you saw three, four months ago in Armenia. You cannot stop this organic process. You have to be part of it. Now the countries that have curved, Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic, they're already at that top right corner, more or less, right? They're already at that sort of Swiss president value system, if you will. Um, some countries are along the way. Kazakhstan is quite along the way going there. Russia is a little behind, Armenia is behind, Moldova is way behind. So really based on which country it goes up and down that curve. Now here's the beauty of what we found. We said, okay. What the hell does any of this have to do with investments and money and business? Well, it has to do with business, understandably, because what you're doing is you're, these people are the people that are going to give you money. You can't make money in any country unless you take money from one of these people. They're the people that are going to pay you, so you have to know who they are. Now, well, when it comes to foreign direct investment, we said, all right, so this is a, it's a cool idea, it's a cool theory. Uh, this is all database up until this point, so this is actually, there's a number. You can actually get a Kwasniewski curve index per country. But what's cool is, okay, what about FDI? If you look at the countries that, that do this, what, what happens to the FDI? And this is what I really like. So Poland, Hungary, and Czech Republic, which are the three countries that curve first, have the highest FDI stake. Kazakhstan's along the way, and look at Belarus and Moldova, almost non-existent. So there's a clear correlation between the social mindset of the social that you're going to invest into and the actual readiness to invest into that social. The behavior of the people in a certain country is directly related to the amount of money that investors are willing to invest. Understandably, there's energy mining, there's sectors that are commodities that have nothing to do with behavior. But the majority, a lot of that 85 billion or so in Poland is not mining and energy. It's FMCG, it's products that are actually creating value for a human on a about added value basis. So you have to deal with, with the social. So if, if this is true, and this is the theory part, because this correlation is not data-based at this point. But as, as I said, I'm just sharing an idea. This idea here is that, well, if, if we assume that the Kwasniewski curve index correlates with the amount of foreign direct investment in a certain country, does that mean that we have to start taking into account social mindset for economic policies? I would argue yes. I would argue that governments, foreign direct investment promotion agencies, trade agencies, export agencies, any policy maker, think tanks, have to take into account the Kwasniewski curve index when they're making economic policy choices. A $10 million investment from a company that has no added value in terms of mindset change versus a $10 million investment from a company that has added value in terms of mindset change are not equal. I would even argue they're very unequal. You have to go after where the puck is going to be. 
Wayne Gretzky is one of my favorite hockey players. Obviously, the best hockey player to have ever lived is Wayne Gretzky. They asked him, why are you the best player ever? And he said, other players go to where the puck is, I go to where the puck is going to be. I think governments, economic policy makers, are still hesitant to move to where the puck is going to be. And I think that Kwasniewski curve index is a clear indicator that we have to move faster to mindset shift in terms of the social and not just in terms of GDP. Thank you.